Well, Dr. Brack, what do you find? Inspector, both of these men were killed instantly. This one by a bullet fired into his left temple. The other by a shot right into his heart. No other wounds? No. Not a mark of violence on either of the bodies. Well, how about the gun? He was holding it in a tight grip. I didn't want to remove it until you came. Here, I'll get it for you now. No, wait. Don't disturb anything yet. I have an idea old Doc Crabtree will be interested in this case. Gramercy, 50485. Police caller, make it snappy. You mean to tell me you need the help of that old professor again? I don't need anybody's help. But I kind of like the old duck. He's sort of a lucky piece to me. Hello, Doc. Yes. You guessed it. A beautiful murder. Two of them. Yeah. Can you come down to 500 Wall Street right away? Yeah. Western Company, room 304. Oh, Wall Street. Well, there's nothing mysterious about a killing in Wall Street. I know, I made one myself. <laughs> All right, I'll be right over. 32. Two shells exploded. Looks like a simple case of murder and suicide to me. The powder marks are too near in both cases. I'd say it was a double suicide. Do you mind if I make a little guess, too? Maybe the fellow here got up at sunrise, shot himself, and then sat down again. Now, oh, look here, Doc. I asked you to come over here because I thought you might be useful. Come on, let's go down to cases. Wait a minute. I had nothing to do with this. Tell that to the inspector. Well, who are you? I'm Martin Hill, the bookkeeper and accountant here. You mean you were the bookkeeper here? Homer and West are dead. I know all about it. They told me downstairs. What were you doing at that door? I usually come in through Mr. West's private door. I never use the main entrance down the hall. Excuse me, would you mind identifying the bodies? That's Homer, the junior partner. That's Clive West, all right. Who else is employed in this office? Well, there's Dorothy, that is Miss Page, the secretary. What time is the secretary due at the office? Well, she's late now. That Dorothy is always late. She could come any time she liked. West was nuts about her. All right, Mr. Hill. We'll talk to you later. Just a moment, Mr. Hill. When you said the boss was, uh, nuts about her, did you mean he cared for her? In a big way, if you get what I mean. And, uh, were you nuts about her, too? But supposing I was, what good would it do me? West had what she liked, money. And them that has, gets. That's all, Mr. Hill. I think we're beginning to get somewhere. A very obvious clue, Doc. You mean very elementary, Watson, don't you? Ah, you'll give me a stiff pain in the... <laughs> Why isn't that stenographer here yet? I wish I were her boss. Not at this moment, you don't. Oh. Where'd that come from? Oh. Take her over on that couch. Right. Get hold of it, Tom.
She's all right. Just a little suffocation and fright. Well, good morning, Miss Page. Late as usual. Oh. Who is she? Our secretary. Bring her over here. So you're Miss Page. Well, maybe you can tell us who killed Homer and West. You were in that closet. And don't tell me you were waiting for a streetcar. Wait, there's no need to be frightened, miss. Just tell us in your own words what happened. Well, all I know is that Clive, that is, Mr. West, asked me to come to the office last night at 10 o'clock. Said he had a very important business appointment, that he might need me. I arrived sharp at 10. Was there a light in the office when you arrived? Yes. But just as I entered, the light went out. Someone grabbed me, and before I could scream, I was knocked unconscious. And that's the very last thing I remember, until just a few moments ago, when I opened my eyes on that couch. Uh, have you been reading any murder mysteries lately? Well, that's the truth, I tell you. Inspector, we have established the fact that the murders were committed between 9 and 10 o'clock last night. Now, it seems to me that's a most unusual hour for so many visitors to a Wall Street brokerage office. Why not call the elevator man who brought them up? Okay, bring in the elevator man. That's all, Miss Page, for the moment. What's your name? Andy Amos Lindbury. Is that your real name? Yes, sir. I was named Abraham Washington, but I done baptized myself for something more famous. What's your job here? I was the elevator man, and I don't know nothing. You don't, eh? Well, you refresh your memory a little about last night. Who did you bring up on the elevator to this floor about 10 o'clock? Yes, sir. Let me see. About 9.30, I brung up Mr. West. And about 10 o'clock, I brung up Mr. Homer. Maybe you'd better take a look at the bodies just to make sure. Excuse me, I ain't in no mood to look at no departed soul. So, Wait a minute. Control yourself. Come back here and answer my questions. Yes, sir. Did you bring anyone else up? Let me see. Uh, yes, sir. There's Miss Page, Mr. West's secretary. How did you know she was his secretary? Well, they always had a lot of night work together. And then there's another man who goes up here about 10.30. I sees him round here plenty, but I don't know what they call him. What did he look like? I can't remember, Your Honor. Did you take any of these people down with you? No, sir. But they could have walked down when I was in the basement. Where were you at 10.30? How do you expect me to remember where I was for back as last night? You didn't do it, did you? Most emphatically, no, sir. Sit down there. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. This man wants to see Clive West immediately. He looks kind of... Excited. Colonel Frederick Pettijohn. Send him in. Yes, sir. Know him, Doc? I do now. How about you, Doctor? Never heard of him. There he is. That's the man that comes in here at 10.30 last night. Pettijohn, what were you doing here in this office at 10.30 last night? Have a chair. Look here, I'm Colonel Pettijohn. Have two chairs. What's this nonsense about me being here last night? I wasn't anywhere near this office. Oh, no, Colonel. That story won't do. Here is a notation that Mr. West had an appointment at 10.15 last night with F.P. And now, of course, F.P. might mean Fairy Prince. And then again, it might mean Frederick Pettijohn. But just go ahead and tell us what you know about this. Well, what if I was here last night? I didn't get inside the office. I was a little late in arriving for my appointment. When I rapped at the door and got no answer, I took it for granted that West didn't wait for the appointment. So I went home. What was your business with Mr. West? Purely private. Wouldn't interest you. Oh, it wouldn't interest me, eh? Now get this, Colonel. This is a murder investigation, not a social team. And I'm not taking alibis as a substitute for information. Is that clear? Pardon me, uh, Inspector. Maybe the Colonel would like a more direct question. You bought a great deal of stock here at on margin, didn't you? I did. Mm -hmm. What about it? And one particular stock collapsed the day before. Well, I don't know what stock you mean. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. Let's call it uh, garbage can preferred. But the fact remains that you owed West and Company a large sum of money. And if you had killed Homer and West and removed the records of your business transactions from their files, you could have saved yourself from bankruptcy. Or worse, couldn't you, Colonel? Yes, I could have. But I didn't. 
You've got nothing on me. Oh, uh, Mr. Pettijohn, are you an army colonel or are you from Kentucky? Engineering Corps, retired. Then I take it you are versed in the uh, use of firearms. Do you own a gun? I do, several. Have you ever seen this revolver? Where? Where? Why, yes, I have seen that gun before. Yes, Colonel? That gun belongs to Mrs. Par... Yes, Colonel, you were going to say this gun belongs to Mrs. Parnell. Mrs. Reginald Parnell, weren't you? How the deuce do you know that? Oh, I've gotten into the bad habit of talking with office boys, porters, and bookkeepers. Am I right, Colonel? Yes, I am. I'm afraid so. You see, Mrs. Parnell, West Homer, and myself were partners in a rather large pool. I hate to see it of a dead man, but it looked like Homer was a crook. He handled the pool. He manipulated our money and wiped us out. I was on my way up here last night to demand an accounting. There was no answer at the door, so I left. If you don't mind, uh, Inspector, I think I'll pay a little uh, visit to Mrs. Parnell. By the way, where does Mrs. Parnell live, Colonel? At my hotel, the Ambassador. Thank you. And I'll just take this gun along. If you have no objections, Inspector? Well, not yet, I haven't. But what are you up to? Up to my neck in clues. I'll be back shortly. Do you realize, Mrs. Parnell, that it was your gun that killed these two men? I'm not a bit sorry. They took me for every cent my ex-husband settled on me. Now I've lost everything except my vote, and you can have that. <laughs> but then I can't expect your type to understand Wall Street. Oh, yes, I do. I know the thrill. I once dropped a nickel in a phone box and got back 20 dimes. Isn't that Wall Street? Well, I haven't gotten back a red cent. And so you threatened Edwin Homer when he came here yesterday. That's a lie. I admit Homer was here last night. I told him I wanted my money. He gave me a lot of alibis. He saw the gun lying on my table. Thought I was threatening to shoot him and made a grab for it. Said it would be safer with him. Any idea where he went? Well, he said he was going down to the office and get his partner West to do something about raising that money. That's all I know. Now, please go. I'm a nervous woman. Pardon me. Do you mind spraying a little of that this way? Thank you. Uh, do you mind telling me where you were at 10 o'clock last night? At 10? Yes. Why, I, uh, uh, I went to bed. Any witnesses? Yeah. My Pekingese. Oh. Thank you. And now, if we need your testimony, <clears throat> we'll send for you. For both of you. Good day. John for murdering Homer and West. Not really. Oh, tut, 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 tut. We proved he had an appointment here last night. He identified the revolver, and he had the best motive in the world. Why, <laughs> it's ridiculous. You might as well pin it on Lindy. He's here all night with nothing to do. By the way, how do you pass the time at night, Lindy? Boss, I just sit back in my chair and let the time pass me. Now, look here, Doc. It's a clear case against the Colonel. If you found out anything else, let's have it. I have found out something else. I have found out who committed the murder. Oh, yeah? What are you trying to do, keep it a secret? No, it's an open book. Edwin Homer killed Clive West. Very interesting, but that doesn't prove who killed Edwin Homer. The problem is very simple, Inspector. Somebody on the inside of this office must have committed both murders, for the door was locked from the inside, is that right? Yes, but how about this fire escape here? I have just verified the fact that the murderer did not go down the fire escape, as there are no footprints on the soft lawn beneath this window. Now, he certainly must have made some imprint jumping 12 feet. But what about the ownership of the gun? This Mrs. Parnell. Homer got that gun from her last night, along with some perfume for his handkerchief. Listen, Homer came here last night, 
to plead with his partner to straighten him out on that crooked deal. West refused. And rather than face the music, Homer took out Mrs. Parnell's revolver and shot him in the left temple. Yes, but the gun was found in West's hand. So it was. And this was found in Homer's hand. Now let us turn back the clock ten hours. Maybe we can reconstruct the events of last night. After shooting West, Homer, his junior partner, started to search the files. I guess he had hopes of destroying the records of that crooked deal. He was also after securities and cash with which to pay Mrs. Parnell after she had threatened to have him arrested. Suddenly, he heard someone coming down the hall. He turned off the light. It was Miss Page, the stenographer. She entered. He grabbed her exactly as she told us. And after knocking her unconscious, he carried her to the clothes closet and locked her in. The office door was open. He closed and locked it. Then came a knock. This time, it was Colonel Pettijohn. Homer saw the shadow of the Colonel at the door, but didn't budge. The Colonel, believing that West had not waited for him, went away. Homer then decided to put the gun in the dead man's hand so that the crime would appear as suicide. He was a cautious man, this Homer. Leaning over the desk, he maneuvered West's lifeless finger around the trigger, a hair trigger. It pressed too hard. And the bullet was thus fired by the dead man through the handkerchief into Homer's heart. There you are. Grim justice, I call it. A great yarn for tomorrow's papers, I call it. I always say, if a man bites a dog, that's news. And if a dog bites a detective, that's good news. <laughs> <laughs>